All right, here's my rust bucket. So this is what it would look like unmodified. Um, there's like a bearing in there or whatever. So all I did to put it in the Datsun is, let's see, I just drilled three holes, cut off the excess, and I bolted the little, the four bolts that you saw on the ground into there. So this is the, the neon strut. These, these are cheap, like $240 coilovers, $250. Um, and then the same studs that I had with these coilovers, I just put them back in. So, but this is that factory location. If you have a Dotson camber plate, you can rotate the plate and use it for caster. Well, it's not really caster at the rear, but you could use it to locate the center rearward and not bind up the shock when you shim the spindle rearward. Um, my car's right-hand drive and I'm waiting on some ball joints, or I mean some tie rods. I'm gonna be widening my track. So this is with a Mustang, I don't know if I, you can see this, through the, uh, okay, you see how the control arm is facing upward? It's no longer parallel with the ground or even below parallel, or it's supposed to be for proper roll center. It's supposed to be below parallel. Well, that's with the Mustang ball joint and a Mustang spindle, which corrects roll center by an inch. Just using those alone corrects it by an inch. So as you can imagine, well, one, this is not a practical low, but um, at the end of this video, you'll see what I'm talking about. As you can imagine with Dotson suspension, even using those flimsy aluminum spacers, you would be right at this, at this ride height, which is not really possible. It'd be at airbags or something. Um, the gain caster, I moved that back two inches, but, so I still gotta finish welding. I had to section my my uh, shock tower to do that. You can kind of see it on the other side. I haven't cleaned the welds, I haven't done nothing. So I didn't move the whole shock tower back. I just squeezed another half inch out of the side and I shoved the string, the spring up against it. Now, this is a taller ball joint. That'll give you another inch of roll center correction. Giving you two, two and a quarter, two and a half inches of roll center correction, which is simply not possible if you use any aftermarket or OEM dots and suspension. Um, spacers, no spacers you'd have to run two of those spacers and that's a disaster waiting to happen and these are well these are off a heavier car now in order to keep the bearing center from doing this right here and while maintaining your stock tension rods i offset the tension rod holes so when i weld this into a control arm i flip this bolt usually unless i don't get the bolt then I make a pocket for the nut, which is kind of a pain, but whatever. Um, and this bolt ends up on the edge of the control arm. This bolt ends up towards the middle of the control arm. And this ball joint goes in line with the control arm, but you have to use the left control arm on the right and the right control arm on the left to keep the inner bushings from binding. You'll see this all in a minute if it sounds confusing. But the reason there's two holes is if you use these holes right here and cut off the excess, then you have factory track width, which is what this is. It's all set up now, pretty happy with it. So this is what I started with. I think I showed you already, but just in case, this is the camber, or not, it's not even a camber plate. This is just the back plate for, for the neon strut. That's in there. Um, I just cut it down, put the three studs in. I still gotta put the pedal in, steering wheels. I still gotta brace the rest of it, finish the, uh, the dash itself too. Pretty happy with how it turned out. <clears throat> I got, using my crude measurement methods, anywhere between six on the low end to eight degrees of caster. So these spindles are designed for OEM seven degrees of caster. Uh, say for example, a 2012 Boss 302 with about two degrees of camber. So I'm, I'm right around there. 
and those are pretty decently performing cars here's what i did to get that though i got the i cut out the original non-adjustable deal right here and spliced in the neon camber plate so i have fine adjustment for camber here i have it at the hub as well um i didn't cut well as you can see the shock tower is still there and it's still spot welded it's just how it tapers in the top and no longer tapers on the rear portion of it and it came out pretty decent a little crude but i uh, i just picked a, a target for a caster and i just put it there and they still have tons of camber adjustment i gotta move the engine back about yay much and uh redo the linkages for my four speed fire this thing up i'm looking forward to burning less oil with a 331 gear ratio i might even go down to a 315. we'll see i got to do acres and acres of rust repair there's that power steering rack so eventually i'll go ls for one to get a fresh motor two uh to get camaro power steering pump to hook up to the subaru rack I st i'm still waiting on the tie rods but as you can see sorry about that um the control arms are nearly parallel with the ground and this car oh and that's a that's a lowering ball joint so with this ball joint and my adjustable bushings on the inboard side i have two and a half inches of roll center correction you can see i can use a little more on that ball joint but i'll i don't want to risk it because that's where it's designed to be put because that that gives you an inch of roll center correction on a mustang but just using the mustang spindle gives you another inch give or take and then the adjustable bushings on the inboard are worth about a quarter inch half inch so um my roll center is right above the ground but as, as you can see the car is extremely low if you were using oem or aftermarket suspension you wouldn't be able to get anywhere near this geometry i got a two inch wider track width so one inch per side set up pretty good i have factory tension rods modified factory control arms so i do have the adjustable bushing and then the mustang ball joint uh and then that's it i mean i do have a factory cross member but it's got a subaru steering rack in it so there's that uh, i'm pretty excited about it let's see if you can see from here so those are the the 2004 subaru tie rod ends actually and i'm waiting on a set of bump steer tie rod ends the outers for the um, for a 2015 Mustang because they're really short and I don't want to cut that Subaru inner tie rod too much but the shock tower mods fairly mild I'm gonna have to mod the uh, firewall there's tons of rust repair I gotta do on this thing this frame rail is okay but the other side's completely rotten and then uh, well inner fender the frame rail is fine actually but then all along here i need inner rockers outer rockers i got to build the box for the pedals to go into so that i have room probably going to use a different set of seats eventually i need a roll bar and potentially a cage because i do have it depends how much money the car itself earns because i can't just take money from my family but this car is a part of the business so i got to take the spindles off and ship them the, the the big exciting thing about this is because these are neon struts well say for example if you order dots and struts they come with the camber plate up top but you have camber at the, at the wheel so the next iteration so i'm on version 10 now but the next iteration i guess you can call it 10 or whatever of the uprights is going to have a, instead of the bar being exactly the length of the factory Datsun setup it's going to be a little shorter and it's going to come with a spacer so you could set it up just like this or you could move the wheel back to center it in the factory thing or in the flares or whatever you happen to have and use the camber plate up top rotate it and use it as a caster plate so 
half inch up top so your shock doesn't bind and then the half inch below and uh, that would work just dandy for the bigger 325s or some of the other tires well 325 is a huge tire um, but I might be able to squeeze that in using that mod so for now the tired old 350 and Muncie four speed is gonna have to do but me and the kids are looking forward to enjoying the car I still got the brake booster and master there and uh, yeah that's coming out I don't know if it's any good but this was a running rat rod for some time anyways until next time um, the suspension mods are done now there's acres of rust repair and the tie rods that I got to put on also I still I got to pull the hood off pull the engine change up the motor mounts a little bit build a cross member for this transmission and then drive it and then hopefully somewhere sometime this summer depending on how things go um put an ls in it so i can actually use the power steering so for now i'm just using it for better geometry but smooth hydraulic power steering would be kind of nice to have not a big fan of the electric because two reasons one uh if it shorts out it's stronger than you and it can turn the car whichever direction it wants to pretty rare though so that's kind of really a non-issue not super concerned about that the other reason is the factory rack it doesn't work as good with these mustang spindles as the subaru rack does because the subaru rack is a little bit wider and with the ackerman angles of the steering uh, the steering arms the subaru rack works out perfect so you have less bump steer well practically eliminated and then the Ackerman you take advantage of it you have more steering angle with the Subaru rack on Dustin's car he has so much angle he had the nauseous frame rails however he's running factory track with he's not running the two inch wider like I am so the trick is finding the right combo of inner and outer tie rods which is a pain sort of the tie rods are 14 millimeter on the outers so it's not that hard to do it's kind of an industry standard lately so you guys take it easy and uh, until next time.